Welcome to Sared's Audio Fan Fictions. I'm Sared. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I will be starting a brand new fic called Something Yet to Learn by Glitter Bombshell, a Modao Zushi, or The Untamed, fan fiction. Summary. Wei Wu Zian is asked, under duress, to babysit a class of tiny land cultivators for just a few minutes. A few minutes turns into an hour, turns into two hours, turns into an impromptu literal field trip. And now there's an entire class that is weeks ahead of their curriculum. Their most junior disciples have apparently imprinted on Wei Wu Zian like baby birds. And Lan Qiren has no one to blame but himself. Rated Teen and Up. Main relationship Lan Wanji, Wei Wu Zian. Additional tags include Emotional Hurt Comfort Light Angst Angst with a Happy Ending Fluff Wei Ying would be a good teacher. Fight me. It is included in such collections as Filled the CQL-shaped hole in my heart Lil Apple's Choice The Untamed Fave Creative Chaos Discord Rex Fanfics that pinch my pierogi Quality Beans, Read Instead of Sleep, MDZS. It is part one of the Joy in the Midst of These Things series. It is complete with four chapters. So with that out of the way, let's start with chapter one, shall we? Happy listening. Chapter one. Spending the winter in Gusu had seemed like a good idea at the time of proposal. Granted, there was little that did not seem like a good idea when his Lanjian was wrapped around him so tightly he could feel their heartbeats thundering in tandem, buried inside him and thrusting against that part that made him see stars. He dared any person alive or dead to be able to refuse Lanjian anything while in such a state. Clearly, Wei Wuzian had only been able to sigh, Yes, yes, whatever you want, please, when his husband whispered the request against his kiss-swollen lips. Truthfully, there was no reason to use such underhanded methods to wrangle Wei Wuzian's agreement. They are often in cloud recesses for weeks at a time. Lan Zhen's duties as chief cultivator hardly allow for him to live a nomad's life. And just because Wei Wuzian can fall asleep anywhere up to including the bare hard ground doesn't mean he particularly likes to. The warmth and comfort of their home in the cloud recesses is very much appreciated. He has no problem wandering on his own, or with Shizui and the others, when he gets to feeling stifled. It doesn't even happen that often. The disciples of the Gusu Lan sect still chafe, but his husband's warm embrace is a balm that counters much irritation. Besides, the list of things he would deny Lan Zhen is just as comically small, non-existent, as the list of things Lan Zhen would deny him. If Lan Zhen wants to spend the winter months in Gusu, spend the winter months in Gusu they shall. All of which Lan Zhen is perfectly aware of. Really, he probably only did it to avoid Wei Wu Zian's admittedly theatric token protests and having to promise something extravagant in return. Such shamelessness, such dastardly tactics, driving him incoherent with pleasure before making such a request of him, taking such advantage of him in a helpless state, totally at his husband's mercy. Wei Wu Zian is so damn proud of him. It hasn't actually been as bad as he'd feared. He's not ashamed to admit he'd been a little dismayed once he'd curled, sticky and sated against his husband's broad chest and realized what exactly he had just committed to. He doesn't like winter. And even the height of summer in Gusu was colder than it ever got in Young Meng. And Gusu got snow almost every year. Still, despite the snow and the eternal quiet, and the food. He can't say he hasn't been content these last couple of months. Sujui and Jingyi are frequent visitors, 
despite both having increasingly busy schedules as their sect duties expand. Night hunting with his husband and their son. Sons? He certainly hopes those strange looks on Jingyi's face lately are him silently trying to muster the courage to ask the esteemed Hangon Jin about courting his adoptive son. Otherwise, the boy might need a visit to the healers for what must be truly terrible indigestion. Is one of his life's great pleasures. There are towns and inns aplenty in the area, and Lanjen never begrudges him a night out, whether he can attend or not. After the first time he came strolling back to the cloud recesses after curfew, none of the guards bothered to make a fuss. The guard who had made a fuss still won't quite meet his eyes, even weeks later. He's kind of curious just what Lan Jen said to the poor thing, but he's not sure he was supposed to realize his husband stepped in at all. Still, curfew breaking aside... He'd found ways to entertain himself while Lan Jen intends to his duties. He's been drawing and painting again. Portraits, landscapes, silly little doodles he'd pushed aside for schematics and array designs in his desperate bid to make the burial mound safer. He had almost forgotten the pleasure he took in painting. The rabbits are almost as affectionate with him as they are with his husband these days and there have been a number of very interesting cultivation treaties published in the years he was, you know, dead. Some of them have been extremely helpful in his efforts to start properly building up his body's woefully neglected golden core. He spent almost as much time in the library in the last few weeks as he did in his entire stay in the cloud recesses as a teenager. If only Len Jen were able to join him more often... A small, slightly wicked smirk curves his lips. Wei Wu Xian would love to revisit some of those old attempts to fluster him to distraction. Alas, in the absence of his Lan Jen, he'll have to content himself with the new protection charm he's working on. He shifts on the mat, slumping over the table in front of him to prop his chin up in one hand. It's an idea that's been knocking around in his head for a while now something that had occurred to him on a night hunt. An unfortunate group of travelers had been set upon by bandits and murdered, their corpses massed in a shallow grave on the outskirts of a far-flung farming village. Naturally, the poor souls had come back, clawing their way out of the sad excuse for a grave and seeking revenge. The bandits were long gone. The villagers had no idea what had been left on their borders. A tragic tale, but nothing they had not heard before and nothing that was particularly challenging. He and Lan Jen had used it as a training exercise for some of the juniors a few years behind Sejui and Jingyi. Had the whole situation not been so unfortunate, it would have been a fun night, just lounging against his husband under the trees in a moonlit clearing, calling out instructions and encouragement to the juniors. He hadn't even had to pull out Chen Qing. Then one of the juniors had lunged too close to a collapsing corpse, not covering his mouth when the thing started spewing out noxious fumes and corpse powder. It had been a very near thing. But one of the other juniors had yanked their comrade back in time to avoid inhaling a healthy lungful of the poison. Wei Wu Zhen chews on the inside of his cheek, tapping the end of his brush against his lips, considering. The table is scattered with reference books, scrolls, and piles of talismans. Some blank, some covered with his scribbles and symbols. He's been trying to perfect a way to charm an item of clothing to create a barrier over the wearer's nose and mouth to prevent such accidents in the future. Or rather, the barrier is easy enough to create. The challenge lies in making it selectively permeable. It will do no one any good to slap their sleeve over their face and have it choke them unconsciously for lack of air. He thinks he's almost got it but he's going to need to try a few different versions of the charm, see where the barrier needs fine-tuning. He's sure Shijui and Jingyi will be happy to help, and maybe they can test it out on a few hunts before the snow melts, and he and Lan Jen start traveling again. So absorbed is he in his plans, it takes him a few moments to register that he's no longer alone in the library. A cold gust of air shivering against his face and his wrists, where his sleeves have ridden up, 
finally alert him to the presence of other people. He looks up from his papers, blinking owlishly as the last of a small group of disciples file in, each clutching a writing set and stack of talisman paper. They're staring at him uncertainly, a group of nine of the land sect's youngest disciples. The oldest one looks like he can't be more than ten. Wei Wuxian can't help but grin. They're so cute! Starched white robes and tiny forehead ribbons, those adorable cheeks still chubby with baby fat. He wants to pinch them. A few give him tentative smiles before quickly schooling their expressions as a final person sweeps into the library, shutting the door firmly behind them. Instantly, the grin slides off Wei Wuxian's face. Lan Qiren stares at him, the snowflakes quickly melting in his hair, doing absolutely nothing to lessen the severity of his appearance. Inwardly, Wei Wuxian winces. Lan Jin's uncle does not like him. Had not liked him even a little bit even back when he'd been a student here. Now? Now the most that can be said is that Lan Qiren is no longer obviously fantasizing about running Wei Wuxian through with his sword every time he lays eyes on him. He knows that's probably the best it will ever be. Mutual pact of non-aggression is likely the best he will ever get from a lot of people. He's accepted that. He can't even blame them. A lot of the mud has been cleared from his name, but he's never claimed to be completely innocent. And some things can't be forgiven. He meets Lan Qiren's eyes steadily, a thin thread of amusement shooting through him as the man's clear desire to order him to leave wars with his ingrained sense of courtesy. After all, Wei Wuxian was here first and he is not currently doing anything that would warrant him being kicked out. His supplies are even neatly stacked. Well, compared to his usual mass of organized chaos. Even so, he has no desire to sit in silence while Lan Chiran attempts to glare smoking holes in his head. He sighs and rises, a touch gracelessly. One of his legs has fallen asleep. Master Lan? he says, saluting with a bow that not even Madame Mew would have been able to find fault with, just because he knows it will annoy the man. Forgive me, I was just leaving. He sinks back down, beginning to gather his notes. Lan Chiran harumphs to himself. Unnecessary, he says in a tone that suggests the exact opposite. Wei Luzian bites his lip to hide his smirk, and continues shuffling his belongings. Lan Chiren does not protest again. He stacks the books and scrolls he's been using up into perfectly neat piles, well aware that the servants prefer to reshelve research materials themselves. Particularly where he is concerned. You put a forbidden tomb back in the general area once, and you're branded for life. The small juniors have all arranged themselves at tables and are busily putting out their papers and inkstones. One of them, though, is watching him intently. A little thing that can't be more than seven or eight. He flashes the boy a bright smile. He's almost done straightening his work area when the door slides open again and a harried-looking, as much as a member of the land sect ever looks harried, disciple almost dashes to Lan Chiren's side. The two confer quietly for a moment, Lan Chiren's brow furrowing deeper and deeper as they speak. Wei Wuxian finishes collecting his notes and stands, quietly heading for the door, while the whispered conversation reaches a fever pitch. Lan Chiren makes a strangled noise in his throat, huffing out a breath of air as though he's in pain. Wei Wuxian, the man grits out, and he pauses with one hand reaching for the door handle. The disciple who had come in to speak to Lan Chiren brushes past him and exits the pavilion without a backward glance. Wei Wuxian turns back to Master Lan, one eyebrow tilting up in question. An urgent matter has come up, Lan Chiran says, every word sounding like it's being forcibly dragged from him. His Excellency requests my presence. Instantly, Wei Wuxian straightens. Lan Jen, is everything all right? 
He takes a step forward, worry spiking through him hard and cold. Valencia then just waves him off. Nothing to concern yourself with. His lips go thin and bloodless. But then he grudgingly says, A diplomatic matter only. No one is in danger. Wei Wuzian heaves a sigh, his shoulders relaxing. Lan Qian watches him for a moment before actually reaching up to pinch the bridge of his nose. Their current instructor is ill. I was meant to take over classes for today. He continues, gesturing towards the tiny juniors. He swallows heavily and the next sentence sounds bitter. Choked. I cannot leave them unattended. Wei Wuxian just blinks at him. Lan Qian sighs, and Wei Wuxian is suddenly quite sure that, were the old master a lesser man, his eye would be twitching. Would you supervise the students until I can send someone to collect them? Wei Wuxian freezes, then slowly glances over his shoulder, searching for whoever has entered the library without him noticing because there is no way his husband's uncle just asked, Please. Finally, he wonders if that was as painful as it looked for Lan Chiran. There was a time when he would have played into every expectation he can see dancing in the old man's eyes drawn out things as long as he could just to get him worked up. He can't help it. Needling people come so naturally, and he's never gotten such amusing reactions as he did in Cloud Recesses. There's just something about these lands, and Len Jen is hardly even ever faced by anything he says anymore. However, Lan Chiren said his husband had requested his presence for a diplomatic matter. That means whatever is going on, it revolves around Lan Zhen's position as excellency. And Wei Wuxian would sooner cut out his own tongue than deliberately make trouble for his love in that area. The work is too important to Lan Zhen. Even if getting him to admit it is an exercise in frustration. Besides, Wei Wuxian chooses his battles carefully where his husband's uncle is involved. Even nearly a year after the events of the temple, after Jing Guangyou's crimes have been laid bare for all the cultivation world to see, Wei Wuxian knows there are those who regard him, and especially his relationship with the illustrious Han Gongjun, with suspicion, are watching to throw anything back in Lan Zhen's face as evidence of his terrible, terrible choice and partner. Lan Qiren is one of them. Not the loudest of the critics, not the most obvious in his desire for some crack to appear in the foundation of their relationship, but he is the only one whose attitude actually causes Lan Zhen pain. In another life, Wei Wuzhen would hate him for that alone. In this life, the knowledge that people and their motivations are never simple and straightforward has been beaten into him down to the marrow of his bones. And much as he hates to admit it, Lan Chiren's discontent stems from his love of his nephew. So, Wei Wuxian swallows the impertinent remark that jumps to his lips and gives another textbook perfect bow. Of course, Master Lan. He cannot hate the man. However, Part of picking your battles is knowing when to remind the enemy that you still have teeth. He widens his eyes and lets his smile go guileless. Would you like me to review anything with them while we wait? He turns to the nearest junior. Ah, they're so small! Baby juniors! And reaches for their neatly stacked notes. You! As expected, when he turns back to Lan Chiren, the man is stabbing a finger towards him with a thunderous frown. Absolutely not. You are not to review anything with them. These students are copying talisman strokes from prescribed texts. You will watch them until someone comes to relieve you. 
Is that clear? Lan Chiran does not raise his voice, though he looks like he dearly wants to. Out of the corner of his eye, Wei Wuzian sees some of the baby juniors exchange startled glances. Satisfied for the moment, he hides his amusement by inclining his head. Perfect, Mr. Lin. Lan Chiran narrows his eyes. Suspicious. Always so suspicious. And seriously, does he think he'll start teaching the children to summon fierce corpses the instant his back is turned? Probably. After all, it had not been that long ago that he had tried to forbid people from even speaking to Wei Wuxian. Whatever Lan Jian needs help with, though, it apparently cannot wait any longer. With a final warning glare and a swish of wide sleeves, Lan Chiren sweeps out of the library. Wei Wuxian rocks back and forth on his heels a few times as the door closes, tucking his hands behind his back as he turns to face the baby juniors. The children stare back at him with varying degrees of curiosity, nervousness, and uncertainty. It's awkward. He likes children. He's good with them, too, whatever anyone else might say. It's been a while since he's been confronted with so many little faces, though, and he's not sure if he should even say anything. A substitute teacher will surely be along as soon as Lan Chiran passes the message for one. They'll probably break the rules against running in the cloud recesses in their haste to get these impressionable disciples away from his clutches. Which is a shame, really, because he could probably be of help. Talismans? Kind of a specialty of his. For a moment, just a moment, the figures in front of him seemed to blur, wavering into other features. Different faces he can no longer quite recall the shape of. For a moment, he thinks he can hear the slap of water against docks, see deep purple robes instead of stark white remembers bright eyes that looked up at him with trust and adoration, and it aches. He swallows against the knot that wants to rise in his throat, absolutely refuses to blink until the sudden sting in his eyes subsides. Then he smiles his brightest smile at the children. So, what are you working on? He asks, crouching down in front of the nearest junior's table. The boy hesitates, shooting a questioning look at some of the others, who just shrug helplessly. Wei Wuxian tilts his head, makes an encouraging hum. Finally, the little lan holds out one of his papers, upon which the outline of a simple talisman is taking shape. Wei Wuxian hums again, tapping his finger in the center of the paper once. Wind gusts. Very useful, he says. They're not, really. A trifling trick. He and Jing Chang had mostly used them to dry their clothes faster when they were young, and a boat of wrestling had ventured too close to the edges of one of the lakes. What they are, though, is easy to make. Uncomplicated strokes, easy to memorize form. They take barely any spiritual power to activate, and it's hard to do any damage with them. Not impossible. Wei Wuxian may or may not know from experience. Oh, Shijia had laughed and laughed and laughed, and he skitters away from the memory before it can fully form, before it can bite. But it's hard. They are almost universally the first talisman a disciple learns to create, an easy introduction to the things a cultivator can do with just a brush, some paper, and enough will. He nods and pushes the paper back towards the boy. For a moment, he considers introducing himself, asking their names. But honestly, there's no way they don't know who he is. And he will not be supervising them long enough for their names to stick to their faces with his sieve of a memory. He settles for smiling as he plops down on the floor in front of them all. Well, you heard Master Lin. Does everyone have the text you're meant to copy? A round of affirmative nods and a chirped, Yes, yes senior! senior quickly shushed by one of the older children. And Wei Wuxian props his chin on his hands and settles down to watch them copy. 
he expects to be there for a quarter hour at most. After twenty or so minutes, he bounces back to his feet and opens the door a crack to glance outside. After half an hour, he finds himself pacing. At forty-five minutes, he has the unthinkable thought that Lanchian had forgotten to send someone to collect the juniors, and wonders if he'll be blamed for it. He dismisses the thought as preposterous in almost the same instant. But that makes room for him to wonder what could have delayed the old master in passing his orders. Has the diplomatic matter become worse than Lan Chiran thought? Has something happened to Lan Zhen? Ruthlessly, he cuts that line of thinking off before scenarios can start occurring to him. They are in the cloud recesses, and there have been no major catastrophes, political or otherwise, for months. If something had happened, someone would have come and told him. Well, Shi Ji or Jing Yi would have come and told him. Another fifteen minutes crawl by, and Wei Wu Zhen sinks back down at the desk he had abandoned when Lan Qiren had swept into the library. He casts another look at the baby juniors as he drums his fingers on the stack of reference materials. Most of them are running out of paper, dozens upon dozens of perfectly copied wind talismans stacked up on their desks. They're getting fidgety, shifting back and forth on their knees, tapping their fingers against the tables. The older ones, if you can call them that, the oldest can't be more than ten, are doing a passable impression of the famously unbreakable land serenity. But the youngest faces are glazed with boredom. For the past hour, the only sounds in the library have been the barely there shh, shh, of brushes smearing ink on paper. But now a few whispers reach Wei Wu Shen's ears. He rolls his neck a little, spots the culprits instantly, and nearly bursts out laughing when they immediately go ramrod straight and focus back on their work with guilty faces. The very idea that he, of all people, would inspire such a reaction. He does laugh then, and barely covers it into a not very convincing cough. The baby juniors all look up, startled by the noise, and he clears his throat. <laughs> uh, um, yes. So, is everyone pretty sure they could write that talisman in their sleep now? He asks, and one of the juniors giggles before they can stop themselves. He flicks his eyes towards the boy, the smallest of these very small baby juniors and grins. Yes, senior, the little one says, and dares to return his grin with a smile of his own. The boy is still in the process of losing his milk teeth, several gaps in the charming expression, and Wei Wu Shen wonders if this is what Ai Yun looked like at that age. White robes and tiny forehead ribbon, and the gaps in his teeth when he grinned. He hopes his little boy smiled often. For a moment, the air in the library seems to crackle with tension. The oldest children exchange wary glances again, and Wei Wu Shen is sure Lan Qiren's parting instructions are running through their heads. Baby juniors they may be, but they are Lan baby juniors. He can practically see the conflict playing out on their little faces. In the end, though, they are children. The smallest is the first to get up and bring a few of his papers forward, holding them out shyly for Wei Wu Shen to look at. Apparently emboldened by their tiniest comrade, the others hold the best of their copies out for him to examine. He leaps to his feet again and obliges, clicking his tongue and examining over the drawings as though they are the very best he's ever seen. Nice. Very nice. Good. Clean line work there, he says, and... Ah, do you see where you made this character thicker than the others? Most of the power will be channeled there. Good. Strong gust. But it won't last as long as you think, he says, and... Very nice. Come look at this one, everyone. See how even the strokes are? It takes all of ten minutes for the children to completely forget any nervousness or trepidation, and soon he's fielding question after question. He plants himself on the floor right there in the middle of the library, and one by one the children gather closer to him. Their questions are simple, naturally. 
but it quickly becomes obvious that their instruction thus far has been entirely on the how and not the why of talisman construction. Copying the form is all well and good, and really for a wind talisman, form is all you need. Still, the children are curious. They're interested. He gives each question due consideration and a thorough answer. And soon, the little ones are pouring back over their work, searching for flaws or redoing lines after Wei Wuxian has explained something. Another half hour passes, and Wei Wuxian finds himself with nine very enthusiastic students, each of whom holds a stack of perfectly done, ready-to-activate wind talismans. They are beaming at each other and at him, and something warm settles into his chest. He'd forgotten this. The simple pleasure of sharing knowledge and watching little faces light up with understanding. It has been over two hours since Lan Chiren left, and Wei Wuxian is starting to think they really have been forgotten here. The thought is still preposterous, but there's no other explanation he can think of. And that's a problem, because the baby juniors are completely out of talisman paper now, and he honestly has no idea where to get more. Even if he did, he can't possibly make them go back to copying the same lines over and over. It's a purposeless exercise at this point. They've got the wind talisman down. He supposes he could teach them a few others, but Lan Chiran would probably spit blood, and he doesn't feel like antagonizing his husband's uncle to that degree. Yet. Besides, he has no idea the level of spiritual energy these children can produce, who among them has actually formed a golden core, and whose energy is still shaping itself. More advanced tricks and talismans might prove dangerous. There is a reason people start with something as simple as these. He is about to reluctantly suggest they gather their things so he can start leading them around the classrooms until he finds someone he can turn them over to, when another idea occurs to him. He shouldn't. He really shouldn't. Lanchiren may not spit blood, but it will definitely antagonize him. Wei Wuxian will have to hide in the Jingxi for days. He looks over the baby junior's faces, bright and happy and interested, and sighs. Ah, well, it's not like Lan Chiren isn't aware that about 90% of Wei Wuzhen's impulse control is entirely bound to his husband. Surely he'll be expecting something like this once he realizes how long he's actually left these students in Wei Wuxian's care. All right, you've done an excellent job copying these he says brightly, and gets to his feet with an expression that the citizens of Lotus Pier had once known to fear. Who wants to try them out? Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. This has been Chapter 1 of Something Yet to Learn Written by Glitter Bombshell Narrated by Sared. Theme music, Spirited Away. Be sure to tune in again next time for Chapter 2. Until then, happy listening! <laughs>